Hey, hey, C Train checking in here from C Train Station at the station. How are you, Dub Nation? Warriors fans, how are you liking the, uh, what that was a good finals game? I mean, excuse me, uh, what Eastern Conference finals game tonight? That overtime game? Boston Celtics overcoming. Boston overcoming uh, the Pacers? Boston overcoming the Pacers? Wow, I think that, that might have been the uh, one of the Pacers' best chances. Boston now is just getting started, and will they get Kristaps Porzingis at the end of the weekend, uh, at the beginning of next week? Okay, let's talk some Doug Nation. Let's talk some Golden State Warriors. Warriors fans, where are you? Okay, there are so many reasons why I believe the Warriors absolutely, in, in every way, shape, and form, need to commit to another three years going all in, excuse me, all in for Steph Curry, for a Stephen Curry roster. So that includes doing things like, okay, so what, the, what does that mean? What does going all in mean? To me, what that means is probably pushing salary cap thresholds, pushing luxury tax thresholds, because you still technically can real can just, Overload with Clay, and who it has bird rights, right? And also with CP3's thirty million dollar or so, I believe that's how much it is. Opt in, so the Warriors have those two slots, and it pushes them way above a bunch of taxes and stuff like that. But if that doesn't hamper their on court ability. They definitely need to pay all those taxes. If the rules, though, also don't it, don't inhibit them too much, right? Like, I don't even know the anti-Warriors rules that CJ McCollum pretty much made up a couple years ago were... what It's like it's like if the Warriors go over, like they lose like three first-round draft picks. I don't even know what it is. But I definitely think a, like a, a million percent the Warriors need to go all in again, again, and again. Here are a couple of reasons why. Steph hasn't depreciated one bit on the court. He's still playing one of one basketball. He is still easily one of the best players in the league. We're talking like top 10, top 5 easily on any given day, any given night. He can do anything. He's setting records every day. He his defense is still really good. For like, I mean, we're talking about Steph Curry defense. It was never like great, great, right? But it's good, good, okay? So we like that. Double good, we like. Okay, so on the court, he's playing. It's just fantastic. It's wonderful. Us Golden State Warriors fans, I've never seen, I don't think we've ever seen it. I don't even know if the league has ever seen it. So this is like a once in a, is a generational player. This is pretty much a once in a lifetime player that we're talking about in Stephen Curry. So like that, that's just one reason. Okay, like, so in this next three years, because I believe wholeheartedly in Rick Celebrini, the Warriors' method of how many minutes they play Stephen Curry and Steph's ability to stay healthy and just, just or not stay healthy, but stay active. Yeah, just, just healthy overall, right? I mean, like, just to, if he does get injured, to take the, to, to recover, to, to injury prevention and recovery, all that good stuff, okay? I trust Steph to do that at the highest level and still be a quality athlete up until close to 40 years old. That's, so that's we're talking about the next three years. Okay, let's talk about off the court for one second. This is interesting. His off the court, his jersey sales like are still top, top couple in the league every single year. So listen to this. He's had the same jersey every year. Okay, so watch this. So one year, you could have loved in the last 20 years, the past 20 years, one year you could have brought, bought a LeBron Lakers jersey. One year you could have bought a LeBron uh, Cavs jersey. Another year, a LeBron Heat jersey, right? This One year you can buy a Curry Warriors jersey. Second in the next year, a Dubs Curry jersey, right? Okay. So like, but he's still tops in the league pretty much in sales. So like people are still buying that one jersey, it's amazing. It is awesome to see, especially like as a Warriors fan, especially like growing up with like, I don't know, Tom Gugliotta, Mookie Playlock, and Bimbo Coles, no offense, but offense in a way. It's compared to Steph anyways, okay. Um, but yeah, he it, it's just like, there's no depreciation in any way. So I like don't know, so like, okay, when you're looking at it, when we talk about like no depreciative value, and I don't really see any, 
it, maybe a little bit, it, it, probably not any in the next three years. What's the difference then in the next year, in the next couple years, the next three or so years uh, of trying to build while Steph is in his prime, then building when he's, when he's 29 and in his prime. He's still in his prime. He's still going to be in his prime. So the Warriors need to act and definitely act as if so. And it's really interesting because it's like the Warriors didn't even really make a concerted effort. Like, I don't know, two years ago, only two years ago, and they still won. That was proof. That was proof positive and set precedent, honestly, that you need to believe and you need to invest in Steph. Everything and beyond. I mean, everything and beyond. Let's look. When people are like, oh, I'm so afraid of Joe Lakeham. He's going to have to pay so many taxes. He's going to pay the luxury tax. I don't care. When I say I don't give a damn, I couldn't care less. And he doesn't either. Listen to me one more time. Joe Lakeham doesn't care. Like, so, okay. You, if you have an issue with Joe Lakeham paying these taxes, he doesn't really have it. He's, he's going to pay them, okay? He, of course, he's going to have an issue, okay? Like, everybody has an issue paying money in general, but it's not that much of an issue. It isn't as much of an issue as I think a lot of Dub Nation, a lot of other, a lot of other people, analysts think it is. Okay, so Joe Lakeup, it's a fact that he bought the Warriors for $450 million. Joe Lakeup bought the Golden State Warriors for $450 million. Okay, it is a fact that Lakeup has attributed Stephen Curry with tons of the appreciative value of where and how much the Warriors are valued at today. Okay, right now, the Warriors are valued at over $7 billion. $7 billion. They were bought for $450 million. Okay, okay. And now there was over $7 billion. Okay, so listen to this. So while everybody's like, I can't do it, we can't do it, the Warriors shouldn't do it. Say the Warriors, for example, were to go all in and say LeBron James and Steph were to just make this concrete plan at the Olympics with Steve Kerr, even jot out some plays or something like that. So then you would have Draymond, you would have like, a, excuse me, you would try to get, get the lineup of like a Draymond, Clay, Wiggins, excuse me. Okay, no, no, one more time. Steph, Clay, Wiggins, LeBron, and Draymond. Steph, Clay, Wiggins, LeBron, Draymond. Can you get it? I don't know. I don't know. Like, that's really a weird one, too, because you're, like, playing Draymond at the five and LeBron at the four, and then, like, Wiggins, like, and, and okay. But this is what I'm saying here. If Steph Curry wants it, Steph Curry should get it. And it shouldn't, and value shouldn't matter because of this. Say they get LeBron James, okay? And the Warriors will now have to get, like, some clutch free agents, Right, and they'll like sign. They'll get. They'll get some of LeBron's guys, and they'll, they'll team up. Like because uh, you know Draymond and LeBron, the clutch team will be together. Okay, so the Warriors then say that it's like a oh my gosh, C Train, it's a four hundred million dollar tax bill. Say it's actually a four hundred million dollar tax bill. Please tell. Uh, say say it's a five hundred million dollar tax bill. I don't even think that you can get that high. Maybe you can. Because who cares because of this? Watch this. Hey, are you ready? Dub Nation NBA fans, are you ready? Watch. Watch. The Warriors are worth $7 billion, right? Okay, by the way, I'm horrible, Matt, but still. <laughs> like, the Warriors are worth $7 billion right now. Say they were to sell out to get LeBron James and also re-sign uh, Clay Thompson. Okay, so they have this crazy luxury tax bill and stuff like that. Okay. The overall value of the Warriors, I bet, seriously, with those superstars, with two of the like, top 10, maybe greatest players of all time on the same squad. Are you kidding me? With like maybe one of the best passer, two of the best passers of all time for bigger guys in Draymond and LeBron, passing to two of the best shooters of all time in Steph and Clay. Okay, look, that team is going to appreciate that value. The squad is going to appreciate the value of the, 
of the actual Warriors organization. So while you're spending $500 million in that luxury tax or whatever you want to call it, number one, you're probably going to pretty cool in like playoffs and like playoff tickets. And also watch Forbes or whatever will start to evaluate your club with LeBron and Steph at like $10 billion. You watch, you watch. It will def something like that will definitely happen. The warrior. So what I'm saying is this. If the Warriors go all in on Steph, which is always a good idea because he's still in his prime and he's proven people wrong time and time again. Even if that all in doesn't go well, the value of a Warriors roster that has acquired players for an all in run will have bolstered the overall value of the Warriors in general, of the Golden State Warriors. So like, yeah. Who was it? DeBartolo or policy of the of the Niners had to say you gotta spend ass to get ass. That's what you gotta do. Look, I'm sorry, it's true. It's true. Will the Warriors do it? Can they do it? Mike Dunleavy Jr. doesn't give me a whole lot of confidence. He seems like the type of guy that wants to do this, that wants to let CP3 go completely for nothing. So like he's gone, and like now, instead of like, for example, getting, I believe, like you could straight up sign CP, sign and trade CP3 straight up, I believe, for Julius Randle, okay? So instead of having Julius Randle on the squad, they're like, no, I don't want him on the squad because I believe conceivably you could like do something like, like that, get a $30 million slot. Okay, I don't know if Mike Dunleavy Jr. has it in him to use that slot. And also, I think I hope that he doesn't just let CP3 go and then somehow get a player like Deontay Murray who's going to duplicate what Pod what Pajemski's progression is gonna be, which is sort of like stunting the growth of one-year players while acquiring a player who hasn't won that much, and then re-signing Clay Thompson and saying that it's a win, right? You can't do that. That's not going all in, that's not trying. So, like again, if they like lose out and they say, oh shucks, we tried so hard and we just, we can't have CP3 back and the luxury tax, we can, we can sign Clay, but the value is now we need to tr get somebody else in the max. We, the best that we can do is, is swing a trade for Deontay Murray. That's like, that's not good. That's not good enough. That's not nearly good enough. Names that Dub Nation that we want to, like seriously, like, like KD, gosh, I mean, I know. It, KD's probably out the window. They just got, the Suns got a new coach, but like, like a LeBron, and Giannis, I know. They got to think high. My number one by far, I got two guys, Lori Marketed and Herb Jones. The Warriors with players like Kuminga, Moody, CP3, Looney, a couple first round draft picks. They could swing that into Lori Marketed and Herb Jones. I think almost all the Warriors' problems would be solved. However, look, we were just talking about should the Warriors go all in? Yes, absolutely yes. Okay, they didn't go all in a couple years ago and they still won. So you need to go all in. Also, going all in says something about you as a franchise and will, um, you'll get, you, you will, good stuff will come to you. Like, for example, I know that sounds weird, but like, um, I, it's going to be tougher to sign. And I don't think that the Warriors would be able to because they because of the new CBA rules and stuff like that. However, like a couple years ago, how Kevin Love uh, got bought out. And then I believe he signed with the Miami Heat. He did all right with the Miami Heat. The Warriors hopefully will look to get those types of players in the auxiliary after making the big splashes, which they have to do. Look, the, you, Steph said the definition of insanity was doing the same thing over, and he said that about this roster. He said that about this roster that they have right now. So, like, don't ask me. Ask Steph. And in the long run, honestly, I hope that when this comes down to it, that they ask Steph and one person and one person alone, that, that Dunleavy... And Lake of ask Stephen Curry, like Stephen Curry, do you want to have Kuminga and Wiggins or a guy like LeBron 
or Lori, Markinen, like those types of questions. Okay, so should they go all in? Absolutely. Did I prove it to you? Absolutely. I am like a lawyer's lawyer. Okay, like <laughs> saw move over. Excuse me. C trains. C trains coming along. All right. C train is coming along. Warriors, go all in. Dub Nation, support it. Let's go. 2024, we didn't make it. 2025 is a new season, a new year. Dubs are going to make it to the top again. C-Train out.